Hi, welcome to your 14 day weather forecast. High pressure has had more influence at times recently, so we've had some drier and warmer days, but on the whole, it has remained quite mixed. Will that continue to be the case as we head through the next two weeks? I'm going to start, as usual, by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 16th. And at the outset, high pressure is centred to the west. There's an area of low pressure just to our north and a chilly northerly airstream moving down across the UK a showery one. Now, as I run the sequence, what we see is that area of low pressure dives into continental Europe and then high pressure starts to build, but another area of low pressure brings showers or longer spells of rain, particularly across the northern half of the UK. However, by the weekend, that high pressure in the Atlantic is building more confidently eastwards across the UK and it's bringing increasingly drier conditions. At this point, at the start of a weekend, there's just some rain there flirting with the far northwest. And just running this through to its conclusion, we see high pressure maintaining its influence for a while at least, but then later on, it starts to change once more. The high pressure becomes centered to the north and to the west. Another area of low pressure moves into continental Europe. A cool or rather cold northeasterly flow moves down across all parts of the country showers or longer spells of rain, quite strong winds there too. I think it's worth emphasizing though, this is just one computer model run, and there is a fair amount of difference on the details between the different deterministic runs by this point. Nonetheless, here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence associated with it. At the start here, the jet stream making a beeline for the UK, this the warmer, orange shading here that indicates warmer air masses and the blues and purples to the north the cold air the UK quite close to the boundary. Running this through we see the jet stream moving northwards as high pressure builds the jet stream also weakens at least for a time then by the end it's quite a mixed picture it's a fragmented jet but we've got the area of low pressure here moving down into continental Europe so there's quite a lot taking place through the first week, but I think a reasonable amount of dry weather if that's correct. But let's have a look at some of the surface forecasts. This is for 15 GMT on Wednesday, rather chilly at this point. Temperatures just struggling into double figures. I think the GFS model, which these charts are based on, is perhaps just underdoing maximums a little bit. Nonetheless, not great by any means for the time of year. Still some snow there over the Scottish Highlands. Forwards to Thursday, temperatures just edging up a little bit by this point, but still somewhat disappointing. Rain there moving across the north. By Saturday though, the high pressure increasingly influential, so mostly dry and bright, but temperatures don't look fantastic by any means. Although I think in the sun, it will feel quite pleasant if there's much sun around, of course, if a cloud breaks. And as I say, these could well be undershooting maximums by two or three degrees even. By Sunday, values have continued going up a little bit. 16s, 17s, maybe some cloud, a little bit of patchy rain, not much there though at this stage. All in all, the weekend does not look too bad if this is right. But forwards to Monday and there's some rain there in the south. It's still, the temperatures are still reasonable, but it's in the days which follow, Tuesday and Wednesday, that it starts to turn more changeable or unsettled once more. Also, some chilly nights look very likely. These charts are shown forecast minimums. They're taken from the UK V model, that's the high resolution one which the UK Met runs. I'm just using them for illustrative purposes because they highlight that even in the south there is a risk of temperatures dipping to or below 0 Celsius on some nights through the first week. So gardeners take note, frost is an ongoing risk. Temperatures will be fluctuating, some nights significantly milder, but keep up to date with the short range forecasts. The Mockreps G temperature uh, uh, graph showing maximums through the first week and into the second. Good agreement through the first 
four or five days there, but as we go through the weekend, the individual lines start to diverge significantly. There's a big spread there really on Saturday and Sunday. Some of the runs going for forecast maximums are around nine Celsius, others going up towards 17 or 18. And it's all to do with the exact shape and position of that high pressure. Will we be getting cooler air still filtering in from the north or the northeast? or will it be building right across the UK? So it's a bit difficult to pin that down at the moment. And the comparable chart for Edinburgh shows something very similar, a big spread in possible temperatures through the weekend. Rainfall, days 0 to 5, according to the ECM and GFS models. These are accumulations, of course, in millimeters. I think the key take out here is that some of the highest totals are in the east and the north, and that really fits in with the idea of high pressure building in from the west. So the distribution of rain, not really the typical one for the UK, although amounts are not particularly high. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, the totals have increased at least a little bit. Once again, the highest values are in the north and the east. So that's all supporting the idea that high pressure will be centered to the west, or at least building in from the west, low pressure continuing to have more of an influence in the east and the north. In more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, so for the run which the animations were based on, this is Tuesday the 23rd, high pressure becoming centered to the north and the west of the UK, areas of low pressure there moving down into continental Europe. If we were in the winter months, this would be a cold pattern indeed, the potential for significant snowfall, but of course, it rarely works like that. The Canadian model, high pressure here also centered to the north and the west of a little bit close to the UK, that cooler, colder air, more making more of a beeline towards continental Europe. So that's where the greatest risk of showers or long spells of rain is. But on the whole, temperatures here probably not fantastic. The German icon, high pressure having a good deal of influence. Low pressure there in the southeast could be bringing some showers. The European ECM, quite similar. And finally, the UK Met Global, high pressure at this point, close to the UK. But taking them all together, the commonality between them is that high pressure is likely to be centered to the west and to the north, not the ideal location if you're hoping for warm weather. And they all indicate that the greatest chance of showers or perhaps even long spells of rain is in the north and the east of the UK at this point. How do things shape up as we head through week two? Trends and probabilities, of course, nothing more at this range. Here's the 16 day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top. And there's actually quite a strong signal for them to be below the 30 year norm throughout week two. Really, that's quite unusual, certainly in recent years. More often than not, we see a good many of the runs climbing above that thick black line, which is a 30 year average. On this occasion, there's only a few there, one or two outliers, which are going for significantly milder or warmer conditions, probably due to the positioning of the high pressure. Rain, well, it looks like more changeable conditions will be returning through the second week. There's an ongoing risk of rain there. It doesn't look especially wet by any means, but some spikes show up and there are one or two bigger ones there, particularly later on. The two meter temperature data tables, maximums across the top, minimums on the lower part. So the oranges there indicate runs going for between 16 and 20 Celsius. It's a reasonable number, but they are in a minority through the second week. There's even one or two going for 21 to 25 but the yellow shading is making up the bulk of these columns, runs going for between 11 and 15. So temperatures, probably not fantastic during the days, a little bit below the average, maybe not as far below the average as those upper air temperatures were indicating because at this time of the year, the sun is very strong. So even if we've got cool or cold air aloft, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be chilly in the afternoon. 
The flip side of the coin though is that the nights may well be remaining quite chilly. Lots of light green there, minimums between 6 and 10, and still a significant amount of the darker green, 1s and 5s, which could be cold enough for ground frost on some nights. So once more, gardeners beware, even in southern parts of the UK. Up to Manchester, it's a very, very similar story. The, tr the same trends there are manifesting themselves. And likewise with the two metre temperature data tables, albeit as often is the case at slightly lower levels, but relative to the regional averages, very consistent with the London uh, data tables. Glasgow, and it's the same story. Below average, 850 HPA temperatures across the top there, and an ongoing risk of rain, a low chance of snow. There are some runs there, we can see that on the snow row, a maximum of four during the second week, but it can go as high as 33. I would think though, over the Scottish mountains, still some significant possibilities for snow. Here's the two meter temperature data table for uh, Glasgow. Mostly light greens there through the days, six and tens. But look at the amount of blue showing up there through the second week ongoing. Those runs going for zero Celsius or lower, so presenting the chance at least of air frost. I think gardeners in the north certainly need to keep a close eye on the forecast because it looks like that frost risk could be quite widespread. What about rainfall through the second week? The ECM probability charts here show the percentage chance on each day, the first three days of week two, of five millimetres or more of rain falling. And I think it's not looking particularly wet by any means, but note how some of the darker blue shade, in particular on that right side chart, is in southern and eastern counties of Britain. Here are the charts for the following three days. The rain distribution throughout this second week, not the typical one, which would usually be the highest risk in the west and the north. On this occasion, it looks like it's very difficult to pin down, but we could well still be seeing more of a northeasterly flow with areas of low pressure closer to the eastern half of the UK, high pressure to the west. Here's the 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot. So it's for the 26th of April. It's highlighting that chance that high pressure will be centered to the west and to the north of the UK. Low pressure not that far from our shores, maybe centered somewhere over continental Europe. A showery picture really for chance of some longer spells of rain too, and not a warm one at least just to make that point again, not at the upper air level, but the sun is pretty strong out this time of year. So if it does shine, temperatures through the days will climb quite quickly regardless. The anomaly chart has high pressure, higher pressure, I should say, because it's anom an anomaly chart. Pressure will generally be lower here towards Iceland than it will be down here towards the Azores. But the anomalies are for lower relative to the norm over the UK and to the south, higher relative to it up to the north, to the northwest there towards Greenland. So perhaps areas of low pressure tracking further south. And that would, that would indicate a greater chance, especially later on through the second week of higher rain totals in the south and the east rather than the north of the UK. So, to summarise, week one, it's a showery and chilly start, but after the first few days, drier conditions develop as high pressure builds in from the west, although later on it could turn more mixed again, but there is uncertainty about that. Frost is going to be widespread on some nights, and there's even a risk in southern counties of Britain, so gardeners take note. Daytime temperatures should recover though after that chilly start. Week two, on the whole, probably quite changeable, but there should be a reasonable amount of dry weather. The distribution of rainfall is uncertain, but perhaps 
higher in the south and the east relative to the regional norms. Temperatures close to or below the norm when taken overall, but in the afternoons it should feel pleasantly warm when sunny periods develop. Frost continues to be a risk, particularly in the north. So uh, there we have it. Quite a mixed bag on the whole. Some drier periods there, but also that chance of it turning more changeable again, especially towards the end of the first week and as we go through the second. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Of course, remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.